Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to learn how to bring alive your presentations using various animations. So since animation is such a vast topic, I am going to divide it into two or three parts. In the first part today, we are going to learn how to use entrance animations. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. Before I teach you how to use animations, I think there are few rules of the game that we must know. Because when it comes to animation, it can actually make or break your slide. So first and foremost, use animations only when required. Now how would you know when do you require animations? Well, you can use animations to create certain impact in the slide, to show your content one by one. For example, if you have five pointers on your screen, if you show all the five pointers at once, people will read it before you even start talking. So what you could do is, if you have five pointers, show one point using animation, talk about it, then come to the second point, show it through animation, talk about it, so on and so forth. Coming to the next one, you can use animations to actually emphasize on certain things. So even if you have five things on your slide and you want to emphasize on one pointer, you can do that using various animations. Last but not the least, you can use animations for dramatic revelation. There are multiple effects that can be used that we are going to see through this video. But I want you to keep one thing in mind. Nothing spoils a PPT like too many animations. So use them nicely and use them nicely. And if required, use not only entry but also emphasis and exit effects. Alright? So let's begin with the entrance animation and how to use it. I'm going to give you a demo first and then we will create a slide. Now let's look at this slide. This has five circles. Let's say that these are the five pointers and we want these to come one by one on the screen. I'm going to select the first circle and first show you where the animation is, how to use it. So click on the animation tab on the top. Click on this arrow and you will see there are four types of animation. Entrance animation, emphasis animation, exit animation and motion path. Today we are going to talk about entrance animation. So as the name suggests, basically this animation decides how your object or your element enters the screen. So there are few default options which you can see over here which are the most commonly used entrance animations. If you want to see more options, you can actually click on more entrance effects right over here. So let's see. Now I'm going to show you a few of these. So if I click on blind, you will see that your object is appearing like how blinders fold or unfold. You can choose something like a dissolve in, peek in. So each animation has its own effect. Wipe, you can do zoom where it will actually zoom in. You can do expand. So these entrance animations are divided into four categories. Basic, subtle, moderate and exciting. So basic as you see are very very simple that you can use in any of your presentation. Subtle again are very commonly used animations. When we come to moderate you will see a few dramatic ones here like grow and turn or like a spinner, stretch, rise up or float up. Versus exciting has very different set of animation. So I am personally not a fan of uh, these animations because I find them a little too dramatic. But Depending on the purpose of the slide, you can figure out if you want to use these. Alright. Now, let's say if you want to go ahead with a regular wipe animation. Another thing that you must know is that when it comes to any animation, you have something called effect options. When you click on it, you will see that how this animation can be modified. For example, this is wipe from bottom. You can also make it wipe from left. You can make it wipe from right. You can make it wipe from bottom as well. Same way, let's say if you want to use fly in animation for this object to enter. You can choose where do you want this element to enter from. Right now it's entering from the bottom as you can see. You can also make it enter from left, from bottom left, from top, top left, right. So you have all the possible direction options over here to choose from. And I will also show you the purpose of why do you choose a particular direction in certain slides. All right. Now, let's say that you want to add animations to all five of these. I'm going to add the same fly in animation. Fly in one. Fly in two. You know how you have format painter to copy properties of one object to another one? 
Did you know that you can also copy animations from one element to multiple elements? So for example, if I want to use the same fly in animation on all the four uh, circles that you see, all you need to do is instead of going to format painter, go to animation painter. Click on this and look at this. Your animation has been copied. And if you want to copy the same animation on all these objects without having to click again and again, you can use this hack which is just amazing. Go to animation painter and double click instead of clicking once. And now you can actually copy it on multiple elements without clicking on animation painter again and again. So if you see it on full screen, this is how your animations look like. One, two, three, four, five. Now coming to how your animation is coming on the screen, right? Right now I'm clicking five times for all these five circles to come on screen. What if you want these circles to come one by one automatically without you having to click? So I want only the first circle to come on click and rest I want to come automatically. One of the very important things in animation is whenever you're using animation, always keep the animation pane open. This is basically like an index of animation that will show you all the animations that you have on the right hand side. Now let's say the first one you want on click. So you will see the setting here which says on click, which is perfectly fine. Now the second one, I want it to come after the first one has come. So I'm going to click on this arrow over here and I'll say after previous. So with previous means it will come with previous, which you don't want. So we'll do after previous. So you will see the animation has moved a little ahead. The next one also I'm going to do after previous, which means it will come after the second one. Same for the fourth one and same for the last one. Now let's see. I'm going to click only once and now all these are coming automatically. But let's say that you want a little bit of delay in each animation. I mean it's coming automatically which is great but you want the time to be a little more between each. So what you can do here is you can actually increase the delay over here. Click on delay. So I'm going to make it one second extra. Same I'm going to do with the next one. One second extra, same for the next and the last one. Also you can see it changing over here in the index as well. Now let's see, full screen, I'm going to click once and now automatically after a delay of one second each animation is coming itself. So that's how you can plan animations, when do you want them to come? What time, how much delay, what's the duration? Now coming to duration. Right now, each animation is half a second. The duration of... So right now, duration of each animation is half a second. If you want to increase the duration, which means you want the animation to come slightly slowly, you can actually change it from here. So I'm going to make it one second. And I'm going to do the same with remaining four as well. One second. One second. One second and one second. Now if you see it on full screen, you will see that each animation is coming slowly and the duration is decided, the delay is decided and it's very, very easy and simple to plan a slide with this now. So these are few basics about animations that one must know. How to decide the duration, how, how to decide when the animation will start, also the delay. Now let's come to the next slide and let's plan animation for this particular slide. I want the header to come using certain entrance animations. So I'm going to go to animations, more entrance effects and I'm going to choose probably the zoom one. I think it's really nice. I'm going to use this and do OK. My animation pane is open so I can see over here what all I'm adding. This one I want it to come with previous. Which means the moment the slide comes on the screen, the animation of the header will come automatically. You have to make sure that all these are grouped. If you want the text to come along with the shape, group all these things together. Now you can decide how do you want this to appear. So I'm going to use basic animation for this, let's say wipe. But it's wiping from the bottom if you see. Look at this. I don't want it to wipe from the bottom because I'm creating like a road map which is flowing from left to right. So I want this to wipe from left to right. So I'm going to choose from left. Look at this. You can see the impact. 
Now I'm going to use Animation Painter to copy same animation on remaining shapes. So double click, copy on second, copy on third, copy on fourth and copy on fifth. Now let's see it on full screen. So if you see the moment I came on this slide from the previous slide, the header came automatically. Look at this. Now click one, click two, click three, click four and click five. That's how your slide will automatically flow. If you want to change how your animation will come, if you want, for example, all these to come automatically, you can choose that. So I'm going to select all these and I'm going to do after previous. That's all. Now I don't have to click at all. All these animations will come on its own. So that's how you can actually plan your animations. I'm going to show you a couple of more examples. Also, you need to know that different animations are supposed to be used for different slides depending on the layout, depending on the shapes, depending on the flow of the presentation. So, for example, let's look at this slide. Right now, there are no animations on this. Let's say if you want to add animations to this infographic slide. So, first of all, I'm going to add animation to this background line structure that you see. So, let's find out which animation to add. For this, I'm going to use a basic animation of wipe. You can decide how do you want this to wipe and I'm going to increase the duration to one second. So let's see, wipe from left, no. So we'll do wipe it from the top and I'm going to do it after previous, which means it will come automatically. Now for each of these shapes, first of all, always group them together. I'm using this shortcut called Control G to group them. Perfect. Also, if you want to add animation to the header, you can group the header and the subheader as well. And I'm going to use certain animation over here. Let's try peek in. I think this is nice and we'll do OK. So I want the header to come first. So I'm going to bring it on the top. All right. And I'm going to do with previous. And this one I'll do after previous, which is perfect. All right. Now let's decide animation for this. Peek in. Does this work? I think this looks nice. Let's see a couple of more. Float up. This is also nice. Rise up. I think float up is nice. It's a little slower than others. And let's do okay. But I want it to actually float down from the top like this. Duration is one. That's because the float animation itself is comparatively longer in duration if you want to reduce I can do it half a second as well so it will look something like this now I'm going to copy the same animation using animation painter on remaining four look at this perfect now you can decide how do you want these elements to come I'm going to choose all and do after previous Perfect. Now let's see. I'm not going to click at all. All of this is coming automatically. If you want to increase time duration between each, you can do that easily. I'm going to increase the delay by let's say half a second. Same for the remaining ones. Now let's see how it looks. So these animations can instantly bring alive your presentation. I'm going to show you one more demo. So let's say this is my infographic slide and I want to add animation to this. So in this case, I want this to come first, right? So I'm going to decide what sort of animation can I use for this. So let's see more entrance effects. Let's try expand or zoom, basic zoom. I think this one looks fine. So I'm going to use basic zoom. I'm going to increase the duration to one. Okay. Now I want all these objects to come from within this, right? Because that's how your slide is structured. So I have to use animation basis that. So I'm going to use wipe for this. I want it to flow from the left. So I'm going to choose this so that it looks like it's coming out from this. So the first part is done. I'm going to now choose the second one. 
And for this, I think let's try and find a different animation. Let's go to more intense effects. And let's see which one works better for this. So let's try peek in for this. Okay. And we are going to make it peek in from the left. Now I'm going to copy the same animation or no. But you will have to copy the animation in order. So I'm going to first copy the line animation. And then I'm going to copy the animation of this shape unit. You'll have to repeat it a couple of times. Perfect. So right now everything is on click. So if we see it on full screen, I'm going to click once and then I'll have to click each time for these things to appear. You can automate them as well, especially these hands and shapes. For example, if I want to automate this, I can just do after previous. The lines can be still be on the click. After previous, I'm going to do it with every alternate element. Perfect. Now let's see it on full screen. So I'm going to click once. Click again. Now this will come automatically. Click once. So that's how you can add animation to any slide and bring alive your presentation. I'm going to show you two, three more examples of how these slides can be used. So if you look at this, I have used the blind animation over here on all these circles. This is basically for a title slide. If you don't want an intruding animation and if you want to add quick dynamism on your slide, you can just do this. So very basic. Let me show it again. Let's see another example. If you want to create like a timeline or a roadmap, you could actually use animations in this way where you show each highlight or each significant thing one by one this is another example of timeline now this is automated i just clicked once and now it's flowing flawlessly on its own so here again i'll show you i have used very very simple animation but it looks really great so this one as you see this line is basically using the wipe animation i am i have chosen the option of wipe from left now, as far as these circles with icons are concerned, I have just done a basic stretch. Look at this. That's it. Coming to the last example. Again, I have automated the slide. I have fixed the time. So everything is flowing on its own. But it looks great when these slides appear rather than everything coming at once. So use these animations to create impact, to catch the attention and to show your content one by one. All right. So I hope that you enjoyed part one of the animations. I'm going to teach you about the emphasis and exit animation in my next video. Till then, try it for yourself. See what all animations are there, what all works for your presentation and bring alive your presentation using these beautiful entrance animations. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching this one, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and do share it with other people who do make PowerPoint presentations. All right. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much.